Hello, my name's David Guest and I'm a Third Space Solution Architect. I'm going to talk to you today about ADFS to Azure Authentication, migrating from one service to another. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about a number of things. We're looking at migrating from ADFS through to Azure Authentication. We're going to talk about the differences between ADFS, pass-through authentication and password hash sync, and the planning that you'll do to change over. We're also going to talk a little bit about the history of Office 365. Microsoft brought out Office 365 back in June 2011. Before that it had been around in a couple of flavours, uh, mostly around BPOS. Identities were linked to your on-premises Active Directory using uh, DERSync. And authentication could be done either cloud-based or using ADFS. ADFS was the only way in those days that we could actually get single sign-on, allowing users within a domain to actually access the Office 365 services without having to sign in again. Very simply, if your domain joined PC was on the network and you signed into Active Directory, you could gain access very easily. If you were outside, ADFS would prompt you for your ID and password and then allow you to sign in automatically. That way everything was nice and straightforward. It made access easy for the users. If they were being asked for an ID and password, then it was the same ID and password. If they were inside the building, they'd just get seamless access all the way through. But if this is working, why move? Well, that's because we have more options these days. ADFS, which has been working for years, requires on-premises infrastructure potentially four, eight, or even more servers, depending on how you want the high availability to be set up. It requires ongoing administration, rolling over of certificates, and generally adds complexity to your environment. Pass-through authentication uses Active Directory still for the authentication with a lightweight agent on the domain controllers. And password hash sync actually requires nothing on-premises at all, apart from the AD Connect box, which is actually synchronizing the identities. So these changes that we've made, the fact that we now have more options, means we're in a position again to understand what we might want to do looking forward. Is ADFS necessarily the best solution? Does it have too much reliance on on-premises hardware? And would it be nice to get away from that and potentially give us a much better, faster environment that's less likely to fail? If we have a look at the ADFS architecture, which of course we've already been through, we can see that we've got ADFS sitting in front of Active Directory, and that's how we gain access to the Office 365. Slightly different when we move on to pass-through authentication. Here, when the user tries to access the Azure Active Directory and sign in, that authentication request is sent to an agent inside Active Directory for authorization. Once the user has been identified with their ID and their password, the reply comes back to Azure Active Directory and it's Azure Active Directory that actually issues that token to allow the user to sign in. Password hash sync is even more straightforward. In this case, there's no agent installed on the Active Directory. Azure AD Connect simply takes the identity and the hash of the user's password and synchronizes that up to Azure. When the user tries to access the service, they're authenticated directly against Azure itself. If we get rid of ADFS though, we actually lose the ability to do single sign-on. We need the users to have this because it makes their lives so much easier, not having to enter IDs and passwords all the time. When PTA came out, pass-through authentication, and with password hash sync, we now have the ability to use a Kerberos ticket. The Kerberos ticket is something that happens inside of Active Directory anyway, so all of the workstations have them. We tell each of the workstations that it's allowed to pass that Kerberos ticket to the authentication page inside Azure. Azure itself has the ability, using an account that sits in the Active Directory, to translate the Kerberos ticket and understand that it is valid. By doing that, we can go back to having this seamless single sign-on, making sure that all of our users can gain access to the service. When we make the decision about how to do authentication in the cloud, we have to bear in mind the way things are today. If we were looking at this 11 years ago, we would probably have gone with ADFS 
due to wanting the single sign-on, same ID, same password and keeping the security high. However, things do change. Making the decision today, we'd actually start to think about the time it takes to authenticate, the time it takes to create the infrastructure we need. What do we have in place today? How complex is it going to be? What's the cost of maintaining all of this? And it's different for each organisation. Many places have rules in place that say you cannot copy the password or even the hash of the password to the cloud. Other places don't have that problem. There are certain things that only ADFS can do. But there are many things that actually password hash sync or pass through authentication can use. And we should be aware of those and make a decision based on what we need to do now. And don't be afraid to change. We're doing many migrations from ADFS to Azure based authentication because things have changed, because the users want to have better performance and better reliability. Because when we sign into Azure Active Directory and therefore Office 365, we're actually being redirected to ADFS, a web page is being presented before the user can actually sign in. With password hash sync and PTA, there is no secondary redirection. The prompt for ID and then password comes directly from Azure. And that can give you a huge increase in performance. An ADFS page could take something like four seconds to arrive from where it was initiated. A password hash sync or PTA on the same box using Firefox will take less than one and a half seconds. And there are differences between these authentications, but there probably are less than you think. If we're doing a cloud only authentication, then we don't need to worry about single sign on. But with password hash sync, or pass-through authentication or federation, we can get a form of single sign-on to work. With ADFS and third-party providers, it relies on us having some on-premises hardware. Pass-through authentication does rely on a piece of software sitting on your directory servers so that it can do the authentication, where password hash sync has no reliance on on-premises hardware at all. Yes, I suppose you could say there is an issue with an AD Connect box must be in place in order to synchronize the passwords, but that's it. That really gives us the least deployment effort. We don't actually have to do anything more than install a Azure AD Connect in the right configuration. If we compare that to a true federation where we can have an on-premises multi-factor authentication service provided by non-Microsoft, then that's something that only something like ADFS can do. But it's still worthwhile, even with third parties, making sure that we have password hash sync enabled. And that's because it gives us a lot of options then to actually understand leaked credentials. Identity protection to work at its best requires not only the identities in the cloud, but also the password hashes. If we look at this as a matrix showing us the various features that are available with the variety of different authentication methods, then we can see there are a lot of similarities. However, password hash sync with the seamless single sign-on is the only one that will give us an authentication with no reliance at all on any on-premises hardware. If the AD Connect box goes down, if you lose the connection to the internet, users will still be able to sign in quickly and easily to access all of their Azure based services, Office 365 and potentially lots and lots of other SaaS provision services. But you still need password hash sync if you want to do identity protection. ADFS allows you to use third party MFA providers linked to the ADFS box, should you wish to go that way. Now once we've moved the authentication for Office 365 away from ADFS, there may be some other things left behind. Other services may be using ADFS for authentication. That could be other cloud services that the users are accessing. It could be third parties coming in to use your systems. One by one, these can each be migrated from ADFS to Azure Active Directory. That may in some cases require quite a lot of investment in terms of moving the software across, 
but generally speaking should be seen as a rather lightweight piece of work. In this case though we won't see that as part of the initial switchover, it should be seen as a follow-on project. The aim of this initial project is to take the users and get them to authenticate in the cloud, giving us that foundation for migrating away from ADFS. So how do we actually go about doing the migration from Federation? There are a few things to think about. Generally speaking, this is a tenant-wide change. We're going to be converting the authentication for your user base from federated to non-federated. It can be done by custom domain if you have multiple domains in your tenancy. A lot of people do, but there's a great many people out there who only have a single domain. With a single domain, this is at the moment a big switch and we just switch everybody over at the same time which means that testing becomes a bit more of a challenge and we would recommend that testing is done in a separate individual environment so that you can become comfortable with what's going on. You need to make sure your AD Connect is up to date and is configured to do the password hash synchronization so that we can use password hash sync. We can also make sure then that the identity protection is fully up to speed and can actually provide that level of ID and password security that you're interested in. This will switch your Office 365 services and anything else that's using as your AD for authentication, providing the tokens, validating the ID and the password. We generally see this as being multi-phased. First of all, a discovery. Are you in a good position to do this? Is it something that you're capable of doing? Then do some configuration and testing, making sure that you understand exactly what's going to happen and how it will affect the user population. Finally, switching through to turning this on and making sure that internally your support desk understand exactly what's happening and you're in a position to support the users through as they move to this direct authentication model. That pretty much brings us to the end of this. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you'll be able to use the information going forward and if you need any more information please contact us using the details on the screen.